portion of our tic-tac-toe tutorial, we're going to build a 3x3 button grid like this, and we're going to give each button a unique label. Let's get started. In a previous tutorial, we had created a grid with two buttons, a yes button and a no button, one on top of one another. And now what we're going to do is simply extend the process to create our nine button grid. But before we show you the right way to create this nine button grid, let's go over one particular bad example of how to create such a grid. Here is what not to do to create a nine button grid. Here I've created a nine separate buttons and then I've uh, created the memory for each button and I've manually painstakingly added each button to the pane and then I've set the scene and I've uh, turned on the stage. Hopefully you will agree that this is not a good technique to use for object-oriented programming and that if we have this many buttons to work with we would be much better served by using an array or an array list. Because our application is fairly simple and the buttons will not be uh, added or deleted once they are created in our grid, an array makes a better, simpler choice than does an array list for this particular application. So we're going to build our nine button grid using an array. I've decided to call this class the button array, which is going to hold our nine buttons. And the starter code is the code that we had in our previous tutorial with just had the two buttons in it, the yes button and the no button. We're going to be making extensive changes to this class, however, to accommodate our nine buttons. First, we're going to get rid of these buttons that we had, and we're going to replace it with an array of nine buttons. And just so that we don't end up burying the number nine all over our code, let's create a constant to show that there are going to be nine buttons in our application. There are going to be no changes to the main method. Our changes will start in the start method. This first part where we set the stage and we create the new grid pane are going to be fine. I'm going to change the size of our scene to be 300 by 300 so that the buttons will completely encompass the entire scene area. And these yes no buttons are going to be replaced now with the nine buttons that we're going to use for our application. Let's start by creating the button pointers for the nine buttons. Now let's go ahead and create the individual buttons that go inside this array of pointers. Now notice here that the label for the button is going to have this text on it and I'm also going to put a number in there and even though internally the buttons are labeled 0 through 8 uh, we're going to show the labels 1 through 9 because the human user typically is not going to start for counting from 0 so you can see here that we've added 1 to the I so that the numbering for the human to see is going to start with a 1 instead of a 0 I'm also going to change the size of the buttons here Now that we've created the buttons and adjusted their size, the next thing we need to do is to add the buttons to our grid pane. Even though our grid pane is a two-dimensional grid, we've chosen to define the buttons as a single dimension because it'll be easier to work with. However, we now have the slightly tricky task of taking our one-dimensional array and splitting up the buttons into a two-dimensional grid. We're going to do that with a nested loop. 
Notice that in the grid pane add method, the column index precedes the row index. So by using this nested loop and varying the row index and the column index from 0 to 2, we've been able to add each of the new buttons. By increasing the button index variable inside the nested loop, we guarantee that a different button gets placed into each location. Let's now run this and see how it turns out. And we see we have a nice grid here of nine buttons labeled one through nine, even though internally they continue to be labeled zero through eight. Still, if we hit any of these buttons, nothing happens. In the next part of the tutorial, we're going to discuss how we can attach an event handler to these individual buttons. Thank <laughs> you.